I have repositioned the uh, rifle, and I'll show you why. Time to play with some clay. And it's because of one photograph. Uh, I changed the position because of this one photograph of a mountain man reenactor at a rendezvous in Wyoming. And how he was carrying his rifle as he's riding his horse. And you can see he's got his arm lifted, his elbow up, and holding just in front of the uh, trigger guard and all the other stuff there. And having the uh, rifle coming across his body. And I thought, that looks great. That looks a lot more real than having it hanging on the horse's neck. And uh, so I'm going to try that for a while, see how it looks. I had repositioned his arm as you can see I've, it's got a crack in the uh, clay and that can be easily fixed but uh, I'm trying to decide whether I want it down here I think I'd like it down there I don't like it straight across uh, horizontal I'd like to have at least just a little bit of a slant to it to kind of break up the monotony of a horizontal position also I did some research on uh, the uh, head uh, gear or you know the head wrapping and he's wearing his hat off uh, his back just like I'm thinking of doing I just got to figure out how I'm going to do that showing the force of the wind and uh, the effect on the hat and stuff like that I got to see if that's going to work out okay but anyway um, the long uh, ends of the uh, head wrap is going to be an interesting thing to have flying in the wind maybe anyways i'm just thinking about doing that this is a, another picture of a guy that's tucked the little extra flap in the back into his uh, knot in the back of his head also some of the gear that he would wear um doesn't show it in the painting that this guy did but I like the shirt, uh, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to do one like that or what. Uh, the uh, handgun that he would have used would have been a percussion hand handgun. And uh, the knife set up, one for uh, maybe skinning, one for fighting. But anyway, just interesting. And then I was watching a movie with... Uh, Oh, what was his name? Um, real famous actor from 1950s. This this is from uh, a movie that took place in South Africa during a battle of the Zulus. And, and it was a early 1800s. And uh, these are Dutch uh, settlers. You know, and... Uh, this guy was standing up in a saddle, and I, I just, I saw that, and I had to capture that moment uh, in the video because he's doing pretty much what I'm going to have him doing. All right, that's get busy on the clay and carry on. Okay. I've only got about an hour to work because I spent all my time editing photographs down to what I wanted to print out. That's something I learned about how to wear a knife uh, from a, a gentleman who does a lot of research in it. You would always wear it with the blade, the sharp part of the blade, down towards the front of your body so that when you grab your knife with your left hand or right hand you could pull out the knife and have it immediately ready to slice if you were in a fight i didn't know that and i used to put the this part here up and he what he said made more sense to me than having it uh, in the position i was doing it in 
Just a little tidbit of information I picked up over the years. All right, I'm going to start his shirt. And it's going to be a pull-on shirt. It's going to be just a shirt that he's... It's kind of like a... Native American shirt, but it's not a particular tribe. And... Because uh, I don't want him to be in danger from a tribe he might be running, riding through their country in. Was that correct English? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm falling apart. Okay. Brain tanned leather was the type of leather that Indians used for their clothing. And uh, it was great leather. I mean, it's, if you've ever had the opportunity to be able to touch it and feel it, it's uh, got a whole different feeling to it than uh, commercial tanned leather. Uh, if it's done right, it feels like felt, and you can almost blow into it and have the your breath come out of it. It's that kind of a quality of uh, tanning. The way the Native Americans did tan the leather, and quite honestly, Europeans tan their leather that way too. Uh, in ancient days, um, they would uh, take the brain of the uh, animal they killed, and each animal had just enough brain matter to tan its own hide, which is kind of an interesting thing if you think about it. Uh, the good Lord provides, and... Uh, it's, it was meant to be used for just exactly what uh, they used it for. For uh, different things that they would use around camp and to live with. And uh, just starting the shirt, though. All right. I'm not going to put the fringe on right now. I'm just going to basically lay out the shirt the best I can. I'm just trying to think how to work out these wrinkles in the shirt. And so, all right, I want to establish where the seams in his shirt would be. They'd be a lot lower on the uh, shoulder than uh, modern day shirts. And that's you got to establish those before you can decide where the wrinkles are going to go. Okay, and I'm going to do a belt, and I'll be right back with that. People back long ago wore their belts a lot higher than they do in modern day times. I'm going to remove the rifle for now. The rifle, the rifle sketch. Because it's getting in the way. Alright, now let's uh, start doing some wrinkles in his clothing. Now, his body is twisting a little bit at, at his waist that way. And so, it would stretch the material in that direction, I would think. I'm guessing, because I haven't got a model sitting in front of me. OK, 
Okay, maybe another stressed wrinkle at the seam, going up to the seam. I had to do the shirt first before I could do his hair. I'm getting close to when I have to quit here, so I'm going to try to do a little bit more. I'm going to block in his hair a little bit. Coming out from underneath the... Uh, now uh, I gotta remember it's blowing forward, or from, you know from the back. And he wore his hair short. He didn't have real long hair. He had, it was long, but it wasn't, uh, you know, shoulder down to the. Uh, waist length. Just a little bit there. Let's see how it looks all the way around. Like I said, I'll continue that later. I just just to get a feeling for what I'm going to, the direction I'm going to be going in. As far as the uh, force of the air and the wind. I think that looks pretty good for a short haired man. I'm pretty well convinced that uh, the photograph I had of uh, Jim Bridger. Uh, younger photograph of him. I'll put it up here on the video. I, I'm pretty sure, looking at one of his older photographs that wasn't uh, doctored by somebody uh, who uh, wanted to doctor it, his eyes pretty much match and his eyebrow orientation pretty much matched uh, what you see in this uh, younger photograph. Well, I'll work on that more. 
All right, that's going to be about as much as I can do today, and uh, I'll pick this up tomorrow. Manana. Good night, everybody, and I'll see you next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.